Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at yet another game engine. This one is called The Machinery and I know at this point in time you might be having game engine fatigue. You might be thinking, ugh, another one? Do we really need another one? And I'd argue in this case, yes we do. This is a very different engine. Now I can't give you a ton of details beyond the technical because unfortunately I don't know them. Uh, it seems to be Windows only for this point in time in terms of the tooling. It does seem to be that it's going to target Vulkan and DirectX and Metal, so it's obviously going to be cross-platform in its support. Support, but this is early on and this is in private beta right now. But what I can do is preview this engine to you and I can give you some reasons to be excited about it. So here we are inside of the machinery. It's not the most flashbang thing you've ever seen, but the entire idea behind this engine, and this is what kind of makes it unique, is this more about being kind of a minimalist tool set that you can build your own game engine on top of. So if you are a C developer, this one is going to be heaven for you because it's just basically almost like a, a, a build kit or a game engine design kit that built around the idea of you extending it and making it do what you want it to do. So we're going to look at exactly how that looks now. But right now, let's start with a really simple look at the um, the tools themselves. Very clean over here. You've got your scene graph over here or your entity tree as it's called here. Um, you've got top level controls are controlled by graphs. Graphs are the visual programming language that is built into the machinery. Like so, very simple here. You can see on init, grab the scene entity of the name camera and set it as the active camera. So it's got a visual programming language, very um, straightforward and clean in its design. It's funniest thing, the funniest thing with dealing with the machinery is when I was playing with this, it kind of really reminded me of a previous engine. And it didn't dawn on me that it's actually the same developers or some of the same developers behind it. And that is the Stingray engine that was acquired by Autodesk, also called uh, BitSquid uh, before the acquisition. And some of the developers behind BitSquid slash Stingray are the designers behind the machinery. So that kind of explains, and, and Stingray had this data-driven minimalist C approach to things and so does the machinery. So if you like really clean design, you're going to like the machinery. So on top of that, we've got our asset browsers. These are various different things that are brought in. You'll see here we've got an entity, like a player entity here. Um, this is composition based. So once again, you do have a component based engine here and transform components, physics components, link components, physics um, body components, and so on are all attached to this guy. You'll notice we've got different components that can be added in. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. So you got an imported asset would be a DCC asset component. A uh, rigger component would be an entity rigger component. If you had a light, it would be, uh, there's a light in here somewhere. So basically that's how these things boil down. Um, you can basically keep adding components to entities. Uh, so here you can see this player is made up of physics mover, uh, physics body, tag link, a camera and so on. A camera itself is made up of camera component, transform component, link component, and tag component. So it's, again, it's kind of where um, Unity are trying to go with dots to turn everything into its own um, piece. So it scales better, it's more parallel and so on. That's kind of the design approach that they've taken from the very beginning. So you might be sitting here going, oh, okay, so what's so special with that? Well, let me show you what is so special with that. And that is this. All right, isn't this impressive? <laughs> uh, this here is Pong, and Pong may not be blowing your mind by any means, uh, but what Pong is, is just a little uh, embedded UI panel. Just like we've got the uh, graph uh, component here, here we got our scene thing here. These are all UI panels. So we got our entity tree as UI panel. These things we can, by the way, dock them around and move. So it's a highly customizable user interface as well. But where it really shines is you can go ahead and create your own. And this is where this whole being a game engine construction kit makes the most sense. Come up here, say we can create a new entity component. So those are the things that we were adding to um, all these things, all those different properties that were put in there. Those are entity components. On top of that, we could also go ahead and create a new editor tab or a minimal tab. And you can actually create your gameplay logic using C if you so wish. So if you want to stay the hell away from that whole visual scripting thing, uh, that can just be the glue to hold things together. You could do your entire, uh, most of your game logic anyways in C, straightforward C if you want. Let's go back to that whole Pong. So we got Pong here as a tab. It's a game that's embedded in here. And these are all... Uh, plugins that have basically been added. You'll notice here we've got a number of different ones here uh, going on, statistics, console, uh, collaboration. Another big part of this is you can actually uh, work with people remotely so I can turn on collaboration, uh, give the server name, and people can log in and kind of work in parallel on the same project. But where Pong really shines as an example is that we can then come on over here. So we're gonna go here into it, we're going to the machinery, so that is here. And you'll notice here if I go in, sorry, I go samples, 
plugins, Pong. So here you can see this is the simple C code behind creating a UI panel inside of the machinery. So if you want to extend the game engine, you want to add functionality to it, or if you want to build Pong into it for whatever reason, here's all that it takes. First off, on the header side of things, it's really trivial. Basically, you register a GUID of some form to uniquely identify the tab, and you're defining your tab's name. That's kind of it. And then on the C side of things, it's it's not a ton of codes. You got a number of includes going on, but mostly it's a number of callbacks. Tab UI, and then here you just got straightforward code. So basically, you're having direct access to their 2D drawing thing, and you can start drawing directly on the screen. So it's a very almost retro feeling code thing. So you can just kind of just get in there and start writing code to do stuff. So here's the callback for when the tab is created. Here's the top, the callback for actually naming the tab. Here's one for creating a menu, dest destruction, uh, and so on. So really this is, and here's what loads the plugin, registers what it needs access to, and so on. So creating plugins is a really, this here is that Pong game you saw in action. So if you wanna go ahead and extend my machinery, or uh, you just, or the machinery, sorry. It's just as simple as this. So if, at the same time, so let's say you've created a game and you're gonna hand it off to your designers, but you want to extend a component. Well, here is creating a spin component. So this is um, a new component that can be added into uh, an entity. This will cause it to spin. And again, it's just a series of callbacks. So load asset, create asset, and this is basically your, your game loop update thing that will they'll handle it. So this is how you could register new components that you can then use in your game object. And then let's head on back over to my machinery. So that is kind of where it really shines. If you want to start extending the game engine itself, the components available to your game, um, you can easily modify the tooling here. You can easily extend it to be what you want. But at the same time, they've taken a data-driven collaborative approach here as the core tool set. It'd be interesting where this develops into. I don't 100% know where they intend to go with this. So I can't give you details in terms of what the cost structure is going to be, what targets it's going to hit, how much of the code. They've mentioned that they plan to open source some of it, but they've never actually gone into like the full details of how much going in here. So let's not say, oh, no, that's actually what we were using right now. So let's go open up one of those other recents. Um, so here, we've got a simple animation example. So don't save, we'll load this up. So here is another level demo you can get from them. You'll see here, for example, we have, this is a DCC imported uh, item. So by the way, I want to get my properties back over here because that's really confusing. Nope, not there, more so. Hmm. Maybe I want to dock it to the side of this window. It's right here, ah, there we go. So again, the UI is heavily customizable. So here we've got, um, the bot here, let's go back to the scene here. There's the bot selected. It is built out of a, like a compound object here that's already been extended. But you see here, it is made up of a rigor component, a scene tree component, an animation state, a machine component, graph component, and so on. I don't know what the graph component actually does. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here you can see a bit more of an elaborate example. This is the controller behind that animated player, which by the way, if I go ahead and we come here and we go simulate, we can see this guy in action. So here we are in the world, we walk around. So that's the animation controller that has everything going on. This is what is ultimately controlling this. So let's head on back here to the graph. This is the kind of thing that you hand over to your designer to work with. And this is that visual scripting language in action. So here is the WASD key movement. So here on the W key, uh, convert it over, animate, set the animation variables. That's kind of it. So that animation variable then will be used somewhere else for controlling the animation. There's actually a, an animation state machine component right there. So that's what that's actually driving. And you got stuff here for handling the mouse tilting, for handling running if you hit a certain key and so on. So this is how your designers would ultimately work. And if you need to go ahead and create a new one of these guys, so why can't I select it? Oh, I think it's because of the way I loaded this in. Uh, you can create these new nodes here that they can be, um, you know, you can extend them and write your own nodes that your designers can then take advantage of or use themselves. So you got this nice uh, dual way of programming. You know, you as a programmer can sit there and work almost entirely in C, create and extend the engine, create and extend your game's code, do things like create first person controllers or so on. And then you can hand that off to, um, you know, the, the 
uh, gameplay designer, whoever, again, they can work in this just straightforward visual programming thing. But what you're really getting here is, again, a toolbox and, and the, the data importing tool. So you've got tools here, obviously, for doing things like uh, importing the, uh, the, the, the content into the scene. It uses as imp behind the scenes, by the way, if you're curious. Uh, but we do have this simple graphs here that can be set up to, you know, a designer can handle that. Whereas you, if you want to extend this, you want to add some functionality to this guy, you want to add a new tool here, for example, you basically just come on in here and create it as a new plugin. So you want to add a new uh, tool, create it as an editor tab. You got a new tab that can all of a sudden be, you know, dragged around and, and moved in and organized or explained or put wherever you want it to be in the editing tool. And you're just creating these simple C powered tools that extend the engine to be what you need it to be. And then Again, it provides this uh, kind of nice, easy approach for your designer or for you, depending on if you're uh, wearing multiple hats. But the details aren't really well known as of yet where they're going with this. If you're interested in learning a little bit more, right now it is in private beta. It's available at armachinery.com. I will, of course, link this um, all down below in the linked article, but you can learn a little bit more about it. So they want to create a new kind of game engine. Game engine we wanted to use. We know the story is over. You've picked an engine for, um, isn't over once you picked an engine for your game. To really make your game shine, you need to extend, modify, and customize that engine. That is what the machinery is here for. A toolbox of building blocks. It's completely plug-in based. You can pick and choose the parts you need to customize it to your specific needs. You can extend the engine and the editor by writing your own plugins. You can even build completely new applications on top of our API or embed our code into your existing applications or workflows. Um, yeah, so you get built-in support for serialization, streaming, copy, paste, drag and drop, unlimited, undo, redo, advanced hierarchical prefab models. We were kind of looking at prefabs before. I was kind of trying to tweak them and change them. I, I don't know the workflow, to be honest. Uh, full support for real-time collaboration. Multiple people can work together in the same game project, Google Docs style. Um, so that was the thing we saw where you could open up that server and type in an IP address and join in with other people. Uh, these features are built into the data model itself. Your custom game specific data will then auto, um, will get them automatically without you having to write a line of code. Uh, easy to build tools. Uh, it's built on the lightweight IM GUI uh, framework, sits directly on top of their rendering system. Same UI is used by both the editor and the runtime, making it possible to run the full editor, in, editor UI inside a game or in VR. Uh, you no longer need watertight boundaries between the editor and the runtime. Editor can be done inside the game itself, if you so like. And then we saw a little bit of their drawing primitives used to make that simple Pong game. Uh, modern rendering architecture, and you're gonna have, so this is where I'm kind of getting a little bit of detail about the graphics side of things. Uh, they have, uh, I take advantage of Vulkan, DX12, and Metal 2. So I'm assuming you're going to see uh, Mac and um, maybe some consoles as platforms just by that choice of renderers. Uh, being data oriented from the start, it should lead towards uh, good parallelism. You can run as jobs. Basically, this is the whole thing where dots in the job system uh, is going on the Unity game engine. That's basically built into uh, the machinery from the start. It is simple, and I got to admit, um, it's plain C. Uh, you, you can use C++, but uh, it's exposed as C interfaces, so you can actually use whatever the hell language you want, as long as it supports the C uh, bindings, which most languages do. From a tooling perspective, you don't even need to have Visual C++. You can actually get by with uh, MS Build tools, I believe. So you can use Visual Studio 2017, 2019, or MS Build. Um, and yeah, they're also looking at having the same tools can ultimately be used for pieces to make your own previs tools, movies, or so on. Uh, I don't ultimately know, again, the, the details. You know, I know you're going to ask me a lot of questions. Is this going to be open sourced? I believe they dedicated part of it is going to be, not all of it. What is this going to cost? I have no idea. What platforms is this going to target? I have no idea. When is this going to be released? Hey, again, I have no idea. But what I have shown you is this is really, again, it reminds me a lot of the Stingray game engine, uh, or uh, what was it Fat Shark or Bit Shark before it? I think it was Fat Shark was the company and Bit Shark was the name of the engine. Uh, and I really was interested in that engine because it was so clean and simple and data oriented and modular. And then um, it was purchased and killed by Autodesk. And that was kind of the end of that. So unfortunately, that was an early death. But this does seem to be a very spiritual successor, but even more generic in its approach. So does the world need yet another game engine? Maybe it does, because this one is different. This is more, again, a kit for building your own game engines on top of it. It's a very interesting approach. Now, again, the devil is 100% in the details. We will have to wait and see um, where they go with this, or what they, um, 
what they decide to do in terms of licensing and details that way uh you know where this ends up as um you know from a business side of things that's going to be ultimately huge for how this turns out uh but in terms of the technology and the details that way it, it's a very interesting and unique approach to things and i do like the simple c approach i like how clean and easy this code is and there's not a lot of things that are designed around extensibility first data driven and using a simple c api while at the same time again offering a programming visual programming language that you know you can hand off to your designers so this one is in beta if you are interested it's a closed beta you have to sign up for it i don't know how fast they intend to move there but if you are interested in learning more check the link down below uh, you can try and get in on their beta and uh, maybe learn a bit more also let me know if you're interested in this one do you want me to keep an eye on it as develops um let me know uh yeah that's it i will talk to you all later goodbye